Hello and welcome to another bad comic review. Today we are looking at Murrah, Queen of Atlantis, issue one. This is a six issue miniseries. This one's written by Dan Abnett with pencils by Lan Medina, Richard Friend on inks, Veronica Gandini colors, Simon Boland lettering, Nicholas Scott and Romulo Fajardo did the cover. I was a little hesitant because, well, sometimes these miniseries are garbage and not worth picking up. We start off with a guy talking to a kid and then his girlfriend and there's, there's some sort of problem going on with Murrah, the so-called, and I'm quoting here, Mermaid wife of Arthur Curry the Aquaman. I haven't been keeping up with Aquaman lately. Not in years, actually, because it's been kind of garbage for a long time. Which is sad, because I always thought Aquaman was cool when I was a kid. Which a lot of people are going to give me crap for, I'm sure. But back in the 70s and 80s, he was kind of a cool character. They did a lot of more, like, general adventuring underwater, that sort of thing. Apparently in Aquaman issue 30, Mura was injured, effectively exiled to the surface world because she was hurt by magic which took away her ability to breathe. It also diminished her super strength and damaged her ability to use aquakinesis, which lets her use and create hard water, not like the atomic type, but the type that turns into shields and missiles and stuff. Well, she's on the pier fighting a guy named the Eel. He's, um... Now, the Eel is a criminal assassin that Aquaman has fought previously, and I think he's based out of Gotham. So he pops up occasionally in various DC books. He looks really cool in this one, because he, he's got almost an Omek look to him. So he's beating the crap out of her because she can't control her powers like she used to, so it's not nearly as strong. And he tosses her into the water, and now that she can't breathe underwater, it makes her incredibly vulnerable. Well, he grabs her by the throat and she starts blacking out. She starts remembering her time meeting Arthur, who she was supposed to kill, and that she was a member of the Zebel, a lost colony of Atlantis, and it was where she was born. She was raised according to strict martial code and their warrior kind of group, and she was trained martial arts and various fighting techniques on old shipwrecks by a taskmaster called Liron, and he taught her hand-to-hand -hand how to use her powers since she was too reliant on her powers. Well, some of that training kind of came back to her, so she uses it to manipulate the eel's water shield, which is made out of aquakinesis. Well, she binds to it with her limited power, and swivels him around into the dock and smashes his head on a piece of wood. She drags him out of the water and they call the Justice League. She kind of explains the situation and why she's on dry land. She doesn't have much of a choice. She also reveals that she is meant to be the Queen of Atlantis because Arthur doesn't want to be king anymore, basically. And the guy that's on the throne now is an imposter. His name is Wrath. And if they can depose him, she will be the queen. So she is technically queen in exile which means that she has some diplomatic pull, so she meets with the State Department and gets them to not invade Atlantis because of the civil war that's going on down there, and trying to buy Aquaman some time to free his people. And while she convalesces, she is stuck on the surface world, which is really interesting because she's literally a fish out of water at that point. And she um, has to go back to and live at this lighthouse with a former Atlantean who lives on the surface now and is kind of integrated and she's picking up the vernacular, that sort of thing. So it's cool. She's got a little friend. This was actually a really fun book. The cover art's a little deceptive because she looks a little more fey in this cover. She's got more of the elven features, but that art is not the interior art. So I have to say, I really like the interior art. I thought the artist did a really good job. I have never heard of Lan Medina, but good job. I, I thought the art was pretty solid. And the book is really fun, and it features the DC's hot redhead that doesn't really get a lot of press outside of the Aquaman books. And I haven't heard anyone talk about the Aquaman books, but I might have to go pick them up. And the fact that it's Dan Abnett, I'm pretty confident whenever I pick up something by Abnett or Lanning that it's going to at least be passably good. I thought it was a shockingly good issue, and now I want to go pick up some Aquaman issues. But I'd recommend this. It seems like it's going to be a good character development book for the Queen of Atlantis. So if you get a chance, check it out. It's only a six-part miniseries. It'll have kind of a self-contained story. So if you get a chance, please check this one out. In the meantime, that'll do it for this episode. Be sure and hit like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends. Thanks as always for listening, and we hope to see you on the next one.